Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Monday, December 11th, 2017, at 11.03 p.m. Mountain Time. Take a look. 3200 Faith On can be seen moving rapidly through the night sky towards close approach of Earth. Uh, that's just in five days. This picture was from five days ago. And you can see this is a big object. It does have some interesting geometry. You can see it wobbling there. And at one point in the beginning, it almost has a, looks like a little flare off of it. It's almost like it's spinning a tail. Very interesting. We'll read that article at the end. Let's get to the update. Extreme weather slams the U.S. from coast to coast. California ablaze. East coast slapped by snow. Whoosh. It's a tale of two extremes, guys. The Thomas Fire is now the fifth largest wildfire in California state history, scorching more than 300 square miles and prompting evacuations in Santa Barbara and Ventura. It's really terrifying. The fires have destroyed nearly 800 homes, buildings, and forced more than 200,000 people to flee. Roughly 5,700 firefighters have been deployed. Thunder snow hit some communities in Buffalo. Boom! Can you say opposite side of the spectrum? More than 100 million Americans felt the blast in the last few days, especially with lake effect snow from the Great Lakes falling in Indiana and New York. Thunder snow hit communities in Buffalo. They saw near whiteouts at the Bills Indy game. I wasn't watching that. I don't watch games. Slick roads also cards hundreds of crashes. That's a hundreds of booms. <laughs> And the usually mild South is reeling to it. 1.300,000 300,000 people were, th were out power before Christmas. Hmm. Behind all of this, another big chill is on the way for a huge stretch of the country. And that's a heads up. Grand solar minimum heads up. Heavy snow, sub-freezing temperatures disrupt. How about decapitate traffic across the UK? Hundreds of schools are closed. Boom. Across the UK today, December 11th, in the wake of Storm Caroline, which moved away from the British Isles on December 8th, told Scandinavia. Now, Caroline allowed cold Arctic air to move in and absolutely cancel all the schools. Heavy snow has fallen as much as 32 centimeters over a foot in Senny Bridge, Wales, 6.7 inches in West Wycombe in England. The heaviest snow has fallen through the morning on Sunday. Now, guys, it's still going to be cold there. Over 200 flights were canceled in Heathrow. 13 in Manchester. As of Monday morning, hundreds of schools were closed. So it's a snow day. Bet you got a lot of sledding in. Much needed sledding happening currently in the UK. There's ice warnings for commuters and disruptions expected today and tomorrow. It's going to cost you guys $1 billion. <laughs> There's one billion booms so that you can go cross-country skiing. Extreme weather. City Christmas tree snaps whoosh, in a 108-mile-per-hour wind. Boom, Prince William Sound. That's a hella gust. And you guys need a new tree. Ho, ho, ho. Wind, waves, and snow. The public has been warned. Extreme weather lashes France. The public has been advised to take precaution across a huge swath of France on Monday as violent storms lash the country. A total of 34 departments are on orange alert. Come over to the country. The whole country is on moderate alert, but a major area here on high alert. Hello, France. Grand solar minimum much. Strongest cold wave of the season to grip South Korea. Guys, if this fell another degree... Their winter crops would be devastated, and that's what might be coming there. Winter weather causing sugarcane woes in southern Louisiana. Let's continue on the crop loss theme. Now, this southern storm bent over all the sorghum and sugarcane, and that's not good for harvesting. So we're going to be watching this. Winter crop uh, set to fall to 31.5 million tons. This is you guys in Australia you took a 41% hit Whew. on grain, and that's wheat. Now, look at the total change in wheat plantings in the U.S. over the last 10, 25 years. 
Now, here's the problem. We're planting almost 35% less. Here's 40% less than in 1990. That's because other GMO crops have taken favor because of their subsidies like soybean and corn. It's easier to get money if your crop sucks, if you got soybeans or corn in, than if you got wheat in. And now with these smaller plantings, when the wheat fails, which it is, hello, 40% failure, there's nowhere to buy wheat to make bread. So bakers and farmers are struggling to make any dough on crappy wheat. The protein content is on the floor. The reserves are not keeping up. And the plantings are sparse. So $10 bread is in your future, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a heads up. Not only that, there's going to be no more good breads or rolls. Now, luckily, my neighbor makes bread and she's got grain. And she grinds it as she goes. So she's got plenty of grain, all high wheat, stored up. But for the rest of you, good luck. Now, this is coming from USA Today, the biggest rag in the universe. Literally, I wouldn't even use it to light a fire. But North Korea's newest claim, Kim, Kim Jong-un can control the weather. And this is because he went up to a volcano and it was snowing. And when he got there, it got sunny. And that's why this fat... Scumbag controls the weather. Not new eruptive phase starts at Fuego Volcano. This is really happening. Ashfall has really been reported. This has nothing to do with some insane 30 year old nut job. But this has everything to do with cosmic rays. A change in the pattern of activity at Fuego has been observed on December 10th, developing into the 12th effusive eruption phase of the year, thanks to cosmic ray flux and the descent into the grand solar minimum. This is a very eruptive volcano. It erupts all the time, especially during cold phases. Incandescent material was seen as high as 500 meters, and the eruption itself went to 16,400 feet, a low-level eruption. And there are a lot of people in this area. So the volcano update today, Fuego, Ducono, Reventador, and Cinnabung, all squirting ash. Now the KP is back up. So the seismicity has dropped to more normal levels, but we have some moderate quakes uh, kicking off today in Vanuatu, a 5.6, a 5.6 in Tonga, a little taster, a 4.9 north of New Zealand. We had a, mi a major, a major mid-range quake in Halabja, Iraq, which probably sh uh, shattered some windows, and a 5.5 in Chile. And we've got Fuego erupting here in Guatemala. So that's a heads up. Let's go over to space weather real quick. And we can come over and see the pretty much blank disk here. We had a small B flare come off of a new sunspot region, which we'll look at in a second. And the KP is up into moderate range and a smooth sailing, good sleeping. No psychic abilities tonight. Sorry about that, folks. But let's look over at 2691 region here. And if you click on it, you can come and see here... Uh, from the magnetogram that there is a little bit of mixing complexity and the blue and the yellow here are starting to yin and yang. Now if we get blue over here or red over in the blue, this beta will jump up. So right now we have 5% C flare, 1% M and 1% X potential. Okay, so that's how that works. And we really shouldn't be looking for anything above a, a, a B flare from this solar minimum disk, which is basically blank. If we come over to the X-ray flux, you can see we're falling right back down into solar minimum A range. A very quiet sun. Let's talk about cold times. Thank you, Anita Bailey, PhD, for putting this 400-page uh, repository of information together for our viewers. Now, the good news is she sold 50 books from our first show in five hours. And they weren't expecting international buyers, but we have lots of international viewers. So the free shipping goes for everybody, for all time, uh, throughout the special. There's free shipping everywhere. Now, this is what she says in an email. <coughs> it's going to be free ship shipping, and she's going to stick with her word. The problem is overseas media mail could take up to six to eight weeks. 
You could pay for expedited shipping, but that costs 25 bucks and that's stupid. The book is only 15. So what she, she is suggesting is that you get the Kindle version for 895. You order the 1495 special and let you wait the six weeks. You have the book immediately. And for only 2390, you get two books. You get the digital version that you can read. And in six weeks, you're going to get the hard copy there overseas. And that's all countries other than the U S. Okay. So that's the deal. So order this book up for Christmas. If you can't get the hard copy, buy the digital version for eight bucks for your loved ones. And I think you can even send it to their Kindle without them knowing. And if they are global warming alarmists, it'll be something there that they can always see sitting there right, waiting to be read. So guys, you're going to get a link to this in the description. If you don't know where that is, under the video on the left is a, a little gray area that says show more. Click on that and that will reveal all the links to all the information that I shared tonight. Now, the book is a no-holds-barred guidebook to surviving the mini ice age. It covers locations, heating, storing, growing food and herbs, water collection, filtering, health preservation, retrofitting for cold, raising chickens, goats, on and on and on, recipes. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Buy the book. It's on special, 21% off, free shipping all over the globe. Boom! Thank you, Anita. Now let's finish on 3200 Phaethon. <clears throat> now, this is the likely source of the Geminid meteor showers. You can Google it all. It's flying by Earth on the 16th at 2300 UTC. Close approach is 26 lunar distances. And it is a big puppy. Now there might be objects in front or on the side and slightly beside this in tow. So we might see an uptick in fireballs starting now and extending to the 20th. Now, Princeton astronomer Charles H. Young used to tell his students that small asteroids were hardly more than mountains broke loose compared to the solar system's larger asteroids, which are entire worlds unto themselves. Guys, this is a three-mile-wide mini-planet. And if you've been looking for Nibiru, this is the closest thing you're going to get. So embrace it. This is your mini Nibiru, <laughs> and it probably won't affect the weather unless it's trailing some pieces that are about to hit the planet. Heads up. This is always a chance of cosmic catastrophe, guys, and we're watching it. Now, this probably is an appropriate characterization of the asteroid 3200 Phaethon, uh, an asteroid where entire worlds unto themselves. It's an irregular chunk of rock three miles wide compared to the system's largest asteroids, which can have a diameter of more than 100 times that, Phaethon would be quite an insignificant member of the solar system, were it not for the object's remarkable orbit, which will carry it within 6 million miles of Earth on December 16th. It could be the mother of all Geminids, and I will leave you links to this article so you can peruse it on your own. On its way toward the sun, this asteroid will skim past Earth with the closest approach to the planet occurring on December 16th at 5.59 p.m. Eastern Time. At that moment, Phaethon will be 6,404,655 miles from Earth, the equivalent of 26.8 times the distance from the Earth to the moon. This encounter is the closest approach to our planet by this asteroid since at least the object's discovery. That's in 1974. Phaethon will not come that close again until 2093 when it will skim past Earth at a distance of 1.8 million miles. And that is a close encounter of the third kind. Boom. That's a heads up, guys. Hope you got something out of the video. We're going to let Faith on run. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. There's the, the object that's coming five days to a solar system near you. Be safe, everybody.